Mark Lindsay, uh, congratulations on being inducted as artist into the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. The Raiders got in uh, a few years ago, and this is a solo thing, so it's a real trip for me. Yeah, not glad the you. first induction for you. Glad to uh, be as here. As the front man, you already have a spot in the Oregon Music Hall of Fame with Paul Revere and the Raiders, as you said, being the vocalist, saxophonist, writer, producer, and handyman. Holy smoke! <laughs> All that stuff. Uh, by way of introduction to those who don't know you very deeply, I want to shout out and praise you on uh, some of your many accomplishments, ranging from a slew of single hits to your role as the artists and repertoire point man for United Artists Records, the A&R guy, as we call him. Got to sign Jerry Rafferty. Yeah. You helped develop the careers of guys like, uh, also, Kenny Rogers, for instance. Proud of a good song for him. Yeah. Sounds like fun times were had. It was great. I mean, I always wanted to do radio and A&R in addition to being a, 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 an artist. And A&R, that means artists artist and repertoire. Artists and repertoire. That's the good dude that gets to say yay or nay about what artists are signed and also pick what singles and what goes on the album and so on and so forth. Really important work, actually. Uh, when, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it was really fun. Um, what, but what do you consider your highest achievement out of all these different things that you've done? Wow. I don't know. I've been so lucky and done so many things that were successful. A lot that weren't. But uh, I always try to look to the future. And I think what I'm planning to be the most successful is I'm working on a project right now. It's probably the best album I've ever done in my life. And uh, it's going to be very interesting. So we'll see. Oh, we're not going to say anything more about it, huh? Well, I can't. I can't say the name, any titles, or oh, anything okay. yet. Okay. So, um, right. We'll wait. Okay. We'll just have to wait. Not too long. <laughs> I wanted to remind everyone that uh, you had a few stints as a radio show host. I did here in Portland. Yeah. It was great. I got had some fun. Yeah. Got a gig on Kissin' AM. And they said, "Stick to the format, guy." I was going to ask, what did you get to play? You, well, whatever you wanted, right? after a right? while, I did, because and the, he, they didn't realize it, but they came in and they said, then you're number one in your slot, and it's unbelievable for you just started. And I said, well, I said, I got a confession. I kind of colored outside the lines and wasn't, I said, well, if I'm doing the Beach Boys show, I can't just stick, can't go p not past like 1969 or whatever, because they had a hit in the 80s. I had a long career, so I just went over all over the place, and my show went number one. So then I went to K Hits, got my slot there, number one, and then got the the, the uh, that was very successful. The cafe was great for three years, but don't don't ever, unless you're a chef or you know what you're doing in the a cafe, the restaurant business, don't do it. Remind us of the name of your cafe. It was Mark Lindsay's Rock and Roll Cafe. That's right. I mean, really, really. Were you there in, on innovative. Sandy? Uh, where, where was yeah, it? it was it was yeah, uh, Sandy, right uh, the old Hollywood. piano store. Yeah, the Hollywood uh, District. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. I might have even been in there. Any touring in your life these days? Oh yeah, I'll I'll be out next year for probably 60, 80 days all summer with a, a group of artists called Happy Together. I think this coming year it's going to be Chuck Negron from Three Dog Night, uh, Gary Puckett, the Cow Sills, the Turtles, of course. Uh, the associate, the uh, the association, I think, or what, some other artists and me, and we'll do like 80 days and get on the old bus and roll. It sounds like a party. Well, it kind of is, but you can't. It's not really a party. It's fun, but you know, when the show's over, you you better get in your bunk. You better go to sleep because it might be 500, 800 miles to the next place, mm -hmm. and it's that's the hard part. They don't pay me for singing. They pay me for traveling. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Wow, what a tour. Are you going to make a stop in Portland, do you think? Uh, I hope so. They haven't done a lot in the Northwest, but they have played up up uh, at uh, Chinook Winds. Oh, the casino up in Chinook yeah. Winds, right. But we, there's a possibility we could. I hope so. I'd love to. Well, we'll, we'll keep our eyes out, okay? I also, I wonder if you are, are have you already met yeah. up with Quentin Tarantino at the... Uh, National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, the, the Grammy Museum. Yeah, his assistant called me and said, Quentin is going to do this thing, and he's going to do a question and answer thing, and he'd like you to be involved. I said, sure. And then she called a few days later and said, 
uh, Quentin wonders if he'd perform live. I said, well, how big's the venue? They said 200 seats. I said, well, that's pretty small for rock and roll. They said, well, don't worry. You're, you're going to sing a cappella with a choir. I went, what? <laughs> so I thought about it, and the songs you wanted me to do were three of the songs from the movie. Uh, yeah, because you you're included uh, your your songs. The Raiders are included. Yeah, right? there's, well, there's four. On the soundtrack. There's four. For, uh, show me your T-shirt. Oh. Once, Once upon a time in Hollywood. And here's the cool part. 35 mil. He had. He has. He still has a theater in the, in Beverly Hills, and he shows only 35 millimeter films, and it's really cool. I've seen Is it that Quentin did. Tarantino? Yeah. Wow. So you were down there performing a cappella. Well, it started that way, and I said, "Look, good thing, Mr. Sun, Mr. Moon, and up uh, the third song, which is, uh, hungry." Uh, had, were really bass and guitar driven, and I really, I mean, the choir, I can work out because I can give them all the parts that are on the record, and I'll sing the lead, but I really need my bass and guitar player. They said, okay, fine. So that's what it was, bass and guitar, no drums, the choir, and they filmed it, and Quentin liked it so much, he said, we're gonna, we're gonna put this out, edit it together, uh, record, you know, it's all recorded well, it's all Pro Tools and stuff, and, uh, we're going to put it out, distribute it all over the net, whatever, and give all the proceeds to the Hollywood Youth Choir. I said, fine with me. So it's cool. Wow, and uh, this, uh, this song, uh, this uh, film is getting quite a bit of press. Once it, Upon a Time in Hollywood. His, his personal assistant said, Quentin is a big fan, which I didn't know, but I'm really glad he is. And she said, the first thing we did, he, he knew what the music was going to be. He picked out all the music three years before he started any of, the, any of this project. He got all the, all the soundtrack in his head. He called Sony Records. There's only three record companies in the world now, really Universal, Sony, and EMI. And they made, had him put bids in, Sony won. So he said, okay, here's the deal. I would like you to make 300, uh, I don't know if anybody knows what an acetate is. Some of you do. Acetates are what they make off the, off, the, off the tape, analog tape, they cut an acetate. That becomes the mother record to be the stampers for, for vinyl. Quentin only listens to vinyl. So he had Sony cut 300 acetates, which they had to ship the master tapes in Nashville. And he took 300, and out of those, he chose 30 songs. But she said, he, he picks the music, his assistant said, Holly said. Then he writes the script to the music. Then he shoots the film to the script. That so, I was just wondering if that's how it all came together by listening to the, to the, to the. Yeah, uh, well, the music. The the period of, of this movie takes place from like the '60s in Hollywood, from the from the time, which I think is one of the richest re periods in musical history. You had the Beatles writing. There was a lot of competition. It was friendly competition. It, you know, come on. There was, it was just a wonderful time to be alive, writing and recording, and this covers the time from like 64 to 69, like that. Well, it's, it must be such an honor to be part of this project. Oh, are you kidding? Yeah. Well, what's next on the Mark Lindsay to-do list or your bucket list? It sounds like you've fulfilled a lot of it. What's next is that something you can't really talk about yet. It's your new project. Uh, I have a project I'm recording on, I'm working on right now. It's uh, a few covers, a, a, a mix of originals and covers, although the covers are really twisted. You'll hear the songs, you won't even know what song it is, even if it's a Beatles song until about halfway through, because oh. I, don't, I don't want to do a cover and sound like the cover, the record, you know? Yeah, you Why do that? Make, you want to make it a Mark Lindsay record. Well, I want to make it different and good, and it's good the first time, and I want to make it maybe not that good, but at least as possible, as closely as possible. Well, continued success on, on all your endeavors. Thank you. Uh, and congratulations on being inducted into the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. Oh, the bucket list. The bucket list. Uh, since this just happened, this is really an honor, but my bucket list is people always say, well, why aren't you in the Hall of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or why aren't the Raiders in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I said, well, there's a guy on the board, I won't mention his name, who said, 
the Raiders or Mark Lindsay will never be in the or with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He just doesn't like us. The, but, the national one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but he retired this year, so there's a shot for next year. All maybe. right, there it is. You can fulfill your bucket and, list. Well, not fulfill it. That'll be one thing. And there, there's always something else. You know, want to go to Japan, been to Australia now. I mean, so been, many things. So many things. And and you know, my theory is, it's a thing called compressed morbidity. And what it is, everybody has a, a sell by stamp when they're born in their DNA. But people, when they get older, they think they have to get older. But Jack LaLanne had a theory, and it's true. It's called compressed morbidity. If you stay in shape, and, and one of the most important things is staying uh, athletic and, and limber, you stay in shape, you don't think you're old, you just keep rocking, you don't have to get old till maybe a few weeks or a month before you expire. So anyway, I'm on the road. I wanted to ask you uh, what your thoughts were when you heard that you were going to be inducted into the Oregon Music Oh, Academy. I was thrilled, of course. I mean, you know, I was born in Oregon. Well, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't born in Oregon. But I'm really happy to be here and glad to be part of everything. And we're glad to have you be part of it as well. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Mark Lindsay. You're welcome. <laughs>